imagination, creativity, showmanship. All that and he could also shoot the lights out. The greatest scorer in NCAA history. Pistol Pete Maravich was ahead of his time. His revolutionary sleight of hand and flair for the game still resonates in the players of today. This is the professional debut of the greatest scorer in the history of college basketball, Pete Maravich. So Maravich, we've heard so much about. I know you all joined Jack and I and anxiously awaiting to see what he can do in pro basketball. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to get in the groove of the NBA, and uh, I think everything's going to work out. Man, you couldn't steal it from Pistol Pete. He'd come down there and make up shots in the air. The no-look passes, the dribble the ball, then pat it with one hand. That's where I saw all that from Pistol Pete, and that's where I got it from. Now Maravich brings it up behind the back. How do you do? A little showtime there. You're looking at Pistol Pete Maravich, in my opinion, the greatest playmaker playing today. NCAA scoring champion at LSU, twice an NBA scoring champion. He handled, and people always say dribble, he handled the ball like it was a yo-yo. He could go this way with it, that, that way with it. He could put it this way. Next thing you know, the yo-yo goes out that way, but the yo-yo was the basket. Okay, the, the basketball was like an invisible string on his hand. I mean, he could really handle the ball. Don't you get the feeling that when you're doing these things, the ball becomes sort of an extension of your hand? Exactly. That's exactly how I felt. Feet fake left, go right, come back. Look at him, yo-yo the ball. Spin it left side of the grip. Back to AJ. The magic man, Miravich. Miravich to the free throw line. Pete turn, pirouette, put it up. Bottom of the net. Beautiful shot. Got some shooting touch. What a great shooter he is. I don't think there's a basketball player that ever played this game that can score as fast as Maravich. Well, Pete was a tougher competitor in, in himself uh, with his floppy socks and laissez-faire attitude, you know, on the court, so to speak. He was a guy that uh, could do it all, I mean, offensively. Uh, and um, we, we used to talk about it, you know, a lot, you know, even talk with him because we were friends. Um, and the things that he did, he practiced them. Nothing that he did was so much spontaneous it was because he had done these things over and over good again in practice. And he got 68 on us, as, you know, when I was with the Knicks. And I used to tell Clyde and, and, and Butch Beard that uh, he only got six on me. You're watching basketball history for Pete Maravich tonight. Here's a basket for him if he can convert. And a steal. Look at him fight for this ball. The Pistols doing it all. A great ball game. And the crowd is going wild here at the Superdome. I was labeled very young as a, as a showman. To try to bring fans back, you have to do something other than just put the ball in the hoop. He shot a shot one time in practice. He came down on the break. He shot it. He let it go. He turned around and started running. And as the ball ripped the net, he said, he did the, you know, did, he did this, and, and we all went like, Larry did that, Larry got that from him. And he do, he would do stuff like that. I was like, going, man, how good is that guy? He shoots the ball, turns around, and he runs, and he, as, as he's ripping the net, he just does that. Then we'd play horse, and he had some shots where he'd jump out of bounds. He had shots I looked, I never thought of ever shooting shots. Outside the line, jump in with two feet, this off is a trick the backboard. Shot now. Come in the line, off the backboard, spin on. There you go, Bubbles. He's got a lot of tricks. Double it on in, spin it off the backboard. It's got to be a bank. It's got to be a bank. There's the whistle, and the first letter goes up on Hawkins. You play Pete in horse, and it was an adventure because you'd go like, okay, I got no chance of beating him the first time. Pistol can make that ball talk, I think. Pistol Pete is a natural nickname. Maravich intercepted. They had a two on one break. Maravich, let's see what he'll do. <laughs> Maravich is hitting a thousand. And that's the guy they came to see, Pete Maravich. Having the kind of career he had in college and bringing that same game and style in the pros, you know, really make people, or I would say the people that didn't really get a chance to see him, really miss him. We lost him too early. You know, because I think his accomplishment to the game of basketball, man, and and how he played it and how he loved it and how he can do things with that basketball that most good. Okay. Letter, Gervin. We gonna remember it for a long time, man. 25-footer, Magic Man, he hits. 
Pete Maravich falls somewhere between the Globetrotters and the and one tour in basketball history in terms of what he could do with a basketball. Uh, how far ahead of his time was he as a ball handler and a passer? Uh, tremendous. He had all the tricks, basically. He could play in any era. Uh, he would dribble between his legs, behind his back, throw great passes, had great shooting range. Uh, and he was a great scorer. He had 68 points in one game, averaged 31 points one season when he led the NBA in scoring. So he could play in any era, the era before, during, or e even today. Uh, but, but he was sort of snake back. If you look back at his career, he had a, a lot of bad luck. Number one, he had knee issues after, say, his seventh year. And this was before modern technology could help him. And his teams were, mis were pretty much mismanaged. And then his last year, he played for the Boston Celtics. And, and what did that time mean in terms of punctuating his career? Well, I mean, he played for the Celtics. Red Auerbach actually wanted him to play an additional year. But by that time, his health had basically just deteriorated him. And Pete says, you know, I, I can't play. And then had he stayed that additional year, he would have won a championship with Larry Bird and the Celtics. He did things that no player had done before. Maybe nobody's ever done since. And if Bob Cousy was the Houdini of the hardwood, Pete Maravich was more like Harry Potter because he was a wizard. I've achieved a lot of great things in my entire lifetime, basketball, and, and I think I probably should feel fortunate that I was able to do what I did and uh, have the relationships that I did and so forth in basketball and, and played before the people and had the fans I've had and so forth. I think that means a little bit more to me now that I've uh, gotten a little older and so forth than, than even a world championship with me. I met Pete when he was maybe a sophomore in high school. I met him at Dolph Shays' camp up in New York. And his father, Press Maravich, uh, was, a, he was a guest speaker. And he brought his son, you know, he couldn't have been more than 13, 13, 14 years old. But the skills that he had as a basketball player, even at that young age, were unbelievable. You knew that he was going to be a great player. He was an exhibitionist, um, the dribbling, the passing, you know, throwing the ball, taking it off its head, shooting it into the back. I mean, he had so many tricks, it was unbelievable. I would like to be remembered as a person that played the game from one standpoint, to entertain the fans.